Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss chapter 19 of the Easy Builder Pro user manual. Within the beginning of this tutorial, you'll learn how to configure the HMI such that it acts as a Modbus server. Towards the end, we'll discuss how to access data within the HMI using a separate HMI as a Modbus client. Before we begin, be sure to check out the description below for quick links to different topics discussed within this video, as well as a link to our website. And don't forget to subscribe to receive updates on the latest videos within this series. Let's get started by opening an instance of Easy Builder Pro. Now within my application, I'm going to select a CMT3072XH, but any of our HMIs or gateways can function as a Modbus server. Initially, when our project opens, the system parameters will be displayed. If you're working on an existing project, you can access the system parameters by clicking the System Parameters button within the Home tab. To configure an HMI or gateway as a Modbus server, we'll begin by selecting New Device slash Server within the Device tab of the System Parameters. Within the following menu, I'll select the Device Type drop-down list and search for Modbus IDA. And within our list of drivers, we'll select Modbus Server. Now, by default, this driver will have an Ethernet interface selected. But, if need be, you can select an RS-232 or RS-485 interface instead. Just be sure that the correct COM port is selected for the desired interface. As an example, the CMT3072XH does not support RS-485 on COM1. So I'll need to change the selected COM port to COM2 or COM3. The exact COM configuration will be specified within the datasheet for your device. You can find the datasheet at wintechusa.com. You can also view the COM configuration and pinout by selecting the Open HMI Pin Assignment Guide hyperlink. While using a serial interface, communication parameters like baud rate and parity can be configured within the settings menu. And you'll notice a few additional options as well. For example, we can use the Limit LW Maximum Read Slash Write Address to limit the LW addresses that are accessible to the master. It's important to note that LW addresses actually correspond to Modbus memory, but we'll discuss this more in a few minutes. And the turnaround delay can be used to delay the time in which the HMI responds to the next command. Below the communication parameters, we can define the Modbus station number. And at the bottom, we can enable our Modbus gateway. The Modbus gateway will allow us to define custom Modbus mapping by selecting the Address Mapping Tables button on the right side. Below this button, we can configure how the HMI will interpret the station number present within the Modbus client request. For example, while the station number of client requests must be equal to the server station number is selected, the station number within the client request must be equal to the station number configured within the station number entry box above. Whereas use station number given by client request will allow the HMI to use the station number of the Modbus client request, however, while using this setting, only one Modbus client can be connected to the HMI at a time. And when station number of client request must meet Modbus address setting in tables is selected, the station number must be configured within the address mapping table using the following syntax. Station number, hash, and then the Modbus address. During this demonstration, I'll leave the default option selected within the drop-down list and we'll click the Address Mapping Tables button to review the configuration of our tables. Within this menu, we can add or remove a table using the Add and Delete button, while the Settings button will allow us to reconfigure the Modbus mapping of a selected item. 
When configuring an item within this list, we can define the data type as either bid or word at the top. Within the type group box, we can specify read or write limitations. Near the center, we can define what Modbus address will be mapped to the specified device address. And at the bottom, we can define the table size and a byte or word swap. Below our list of tables, we have a few additional settings that determine how the server responds to requests that contain undefined registers. And the import and export buttons will allow you to import or export the configuration of your Modbus mapping tables as a CSV. The Modbus gateway is an extremely useful feature. But I would like to note that although an HMI can function as both a Modbus TCP server and a Modbus RTU slave, only one Modbus server driver can be configured as a Modbus gateway. The Modbus mapping defined within the gateway will only apply to the specified driver. Other instances of the Modbus server driver will utilize the default configuration shown within the following diagram. Now if we configure this driver to utilize an Ethernet interface, then the port number can be specified by clicking the Settings button. Although if you are not using a CMT or CMT X series HMI, then the port number can be specified within the Model tab. During this demonstration, I'll configure my HMI as a Modbus TCP server. We'll keep our gateway enabled, and I'll define our mapping tables. To begin, I'm going to delete table 6, 5, 3, and 2. Then, I'll reconfigure the size of table 1 to 100 bits, and enable read only. In table 4, I'll reconfigure the size to 100 words, and enable use execution function. This will allow the HMI to restrict write access based on the state of a predefined bit. I'll configure the execution bit to LB100 and click OK to save my current configuration. Now, currently the tables are mapped to the HMI's internal memory. However, if you have another driver within your project and you want to provide access to certain tags or registers within that device over Modbus TCP, you can map these two specific Modbus registers within a Modbus mapping table as well. With that finished, I'll click OK and place a few objects on our work area. We'll start with the toggle switch, addressed to LB0. This address is mapped to 0x1 within our Modbus mapping table. And I'll copy this toggle switch and configure the address to LB100. We'll use this toggle switch to enable or disable write access by toggling our execution bit. I'll also place a numeric object addressed to LW0 on our work area. LW0 is mapped to 4x1 within our Modbus mapping table. I'll leave the rest of my project as is and download this to our HMI. To access data within the HMI, which is currently functioning as a Modbus server, we can use a third-party Modbus client, like a PLC or a testing application. We can also use another HMI or the online simulator to read and write data within our Modbus device. To use another HMI, I'll open a new instance of EasyBuilder Pro. Now the HMI that I'm going to use as my Modbus client will be a CMT3072. But again, any of our HMIs or gateways can function as a Modbus client. And in the same way that we added the Modbus server driver, we'll add the Modbus TCP IP driver as well. I'll define the IP of our Modbus server. And we'll leave the port set to 502 and the station number at 1. This matches the configuration of our server. When finished, I'll click OK to add this driver to our project. Once again, 
I'll add a toggle switch. However, this time we'll address the toggle switch to 0x1. This corresponds to LB0 within the HMI that was configured as a modbus server. We'll also add a numeric object addressed to 4x1. This address corresponds to LW0. With that configured, let's download this to our HMI for testing. Through VNC, we can see that the toggle switch addressed to 0x1 allows us to read the state of LB0 within our Modba server. While our numeric object addressed to 4x1 allows us to read and write data within LW0. However, if we turn on the execution bit, the HMI will only allow us to read data. Writing will no longer be permitted. Now I would like to note that, if necessary, it is also possible to create a configuration screen for the Modbus server using system tags available within EasyBuilder Pro. Our software provides system tags that will allow you to update a Modbus server station number during runtime. To add this to your project, create an object addressed to LW9544 or the system tag that corresponds to your selected interface. During runtime, the station number can then be configured by the operator or an engineer. It is also important to acknowledge that our Modbus RTU driver contains some additional Modbus addresses, each with a unique purpose. As an example, in most cases, when writing Word data to a Modbus slave, you may use the 4x address type. However, a 4x address writes data using function code 16 which may not be supported on the external device. In cases such as this, it may be necessary to use a different address type. Other options include 6x, which writes data using function code 6. If the external device requires a word swap when reading 32-bit data, you may use the 5x address type, which supports this function. For a detailed list of each register and its corresponding function, please see the PLC connection guide for the Modbus driver that you are using within your application. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.